Well, I get the pleasure and the privilege um, to work with these great minds on a weekly basis to create this program. But I think for those who first heard about this program, it almost sounds like a unicorn. Um, how did this happen in the midst of the pandemic? Um, so I would like to address this question to you, Denise, and perhaps tell us a little bit about the inspirations behind the creation of the global program. Michael. So right before the uh, pandemic, SVF was asked to oversee and expand school to home project here in Northern California. I immediately saw an opportunity for innovation, especially with this challenging aspect of the pandemic that we were encountering. The inspiration came from my passion to enhance student learning and engagement while supporting their technological growth. This opportunity also lended itself to a global educational space to innovate through project-based learning, design thinking, which amplifies SVF's mission and vision of providing access to college and STEM careers for students further from access and opportunity. And then add on the importance of students pronouncing each other's name correctly. And then you have this amazing initiative that I joined in with the county and with Yiwan a few years back on My Name, My Identity. And this nationwide work that was started then was able to be sustainable as the students started to learn about each other's culture and you know why it was so meaningful for them, their names were so meaningful and why you know, it's important for you to be able to pronounce my name correctly and that kind of thing. So all of these things that I brought in with me to the foundation, there, this was like another way to launch this work and bring together more students, educators, partnerships, connecting locally and across, across the country. All right. Well, you got, well, you kind of mentioned about Dr. Yi Wan. So mm -hmm. I'm going to like popcorn that over to her um, that I guess because of your, both of your um, connections for a long time, creating, uh, I guess, Global Exchange Program 2.0 during mm -hmm. COVID mm -hmm. was as natural. Uh, yes, yeah, so I would like to uh, state that one of the priorities at the Santa Clara County Office of Education is being responsive to the issues that are related to the pandemic. So earlier, Dr. Diwan had already mentioned about um, the digital equity piece. So as Denise approached the county office for the partnership, we also identified the issue of student engagement because during the pandemic, uh, we are concerned about how engaged, I mean, uh, students feel like connecting to learning in a very meaningful way. So as we began the conversation about the partnership, we really um, focus on the global education framework, which is a research informed um, approach in structuring instruction with a focus on investigating the world, understanding multiple perspectives to communicate effectively, as well as to take actions. Uh, we also, as Denise mentioned earlier, we also want to honor students' identity and their culture. So this is definitely a natural connection that will be able to build a super powerful program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I do want to kind of like, you know, bring California all the way to Singapore to Mr. Rich. Um, we call him Mr. Rich because that's his name in the classroom. So how did it end up in Singapore out of all the country in the whole wide world? Yeah, it, it, was, a, it was a great gift. Um, it's a part of our curriculum to reach out into the community, whether that community is a global community or our local community. But with the pandemic, uh, we were back in school, but Singapore was still very much closed. So going out into the local community was not gonna happen. And Dr. Wan and Ms. Williams reached out to me, which was, you know, just worked out perfectly. Um, now knowing the foundation, the Silicon Valley Education Foundation, we can make this happen uh, a lot more in advance, but really they had reached out to me and made it possible. So I was very fortunate in that sense. 
uh, now that I know them, um, you know, we already have plans for the next ones possibly down the road. So uh, having this connection with them allows us to link up to other schools in America and vice versa. Uh, the actual international community is very close knit. So the foundation knows me and they know other teachers. And it's, you know, my friends are teaching in Africa, in Europe and other parts of Asia. This could be replicated in other parts of the world just as easy as it was in Singapore. Awesome. I was like, I just got goosebumps a little bit. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I do want to bring Dr. Clinton into this conversation. What do you feel most proud about this, you know, this little program? And mind you, everybody, it's only eight different sessions that the students get to meet with each other. First of all, you know, I want to thank uh, Santa Clara County Office of Education, Silicon Valley Education Foundation, School of Home, uh, Canadian International School for giving us this opportunity because uh, we're here in San Jose, East San Jose, and uh, especially during the pandemic, this has been really exciting for our school and our students, and it's something that we needed um, during this time. So our partnership has been really great. And uh, what I'm proud of is I'm proud of my students. I'm proud of all the students involved at both school sites. Uh, I'm proud of the willingness to open up, getting to know each other, to let their barriers down, let their guard down, and really support each other during this time of need during a pandemic. So that's on the student end. But my teachers drove this initiative, not me. I mean, it, it's the teachers. It's, it's uh, Catherine Grunwald, my teacher on special assignment. She didn't have to get involved in this project. She wanted to. She saw the need. Same thing with uh, Miss Crystal Madrill, who's our seventh and eighth grade uh, humanities teacher. And then, of course, Mr. Rich um, from our school in Singapore. So it, it was really about we we gave the framework or the framework was given provided, I should say, the structure and the, the support, definitely 100%. But it's really those three teachers that drove this uh, bus. Since I've been in education, I really believe in putting students first at the heart of every decision that I have to make as an administrator. And I really think that everyone involved in this program put students first. So I'm proud of that. If there are schools out there in Southern California that is a part of the School to Home Network and they would like to replicate this global exchange model, what will be the secret sauce? Mm -hmm. So I would say that the secret sauce is just to reach out to the foundation and being, you know, you and I so that we can meet up with them and explain all the components and all of the, what they need to do to move forward. Uh, to give them some background and also learn about the importance of the leadership that comes from the teachers and of course the site administrator because as Dr. Clyden said also earlier that that's very important. It cannot move forward without a strong leadership team and, and, and get parents excited about it also because it is uh, those parents need to know, you know, my child is it's the end of the day and they're still in this other meeting or whatever, but they were really supportive in getting permission slips back. So, you know, what are all the ins and outs that we need to know? So we are ready to move forward. So just reach out. And I would also like to add from that curriculum lens, as we are doing our planning, we always put our students in the center of that learning experience from that equity lens. We want to make sure that we build in games and activities that make the social, emotional, cultural, and personal connection with our students. We are supporting the whole child. So again, I want to echo Dr. Clyden is putting students first. So that's something that we feel really, really proud. I spent like these past few weeks learning about my partners and their cultures and I said it was like a very fun experience overall that I I would probably never forget so that's probably why I chose memorable connection it's very simple things like the internet connections that our Fisher Middle School students have or not during the session, that some of them have to always logging out and then trying to get back every single time when there's an internet access um, problem. 
or it's the cultural connections that our students are able to uh, to build. Fun because I really like interacting with other people from a different country for me. It's challenging. I would choose this word because global project involves team members from various culture and organizations spread in locations across country and time zone. This expedition. We are on an expedition to explore global connections and cultural experiences. So eye-opening. And uh, I chose this word. It's because I meet many friends that is say, has the same age like me and uh, they are in American uh, America and uh, I learn many a lot of things about their cultures it and is collaborative because the project pushes the boundaries of international student interaction working together enabling students to connect with new peers learn about their cultures and extend their learning curve of technological skills. project is engaging. I would choose this word because in this program, we get to interact with really nice students from another country. We also get to make new friends and learn about other people's lifestyle. It was very interesting to talk with CIS students, and this program made this project really fun. Interest, because if you have the same interest with other it's more easier to communicate with them and also is and also it is a very easy way to make friends with someone else or just is different i would choose this word because i've never done something like this before and it was really fun it's not i would choose this word because i'm lucky to be friends with people from across the ocean and we can communicate with each other interconnectivity. Uh, I would choose this word because of all of the connections we've been able to make uh, during this time and during this program, students across the world being able to connect and learn about each other, um, students being able to use technology in this way to make these connections. I would say awesome. Uh, how often do, do students have this experience, right, where they're able to partner up with other students uh, from another country and really get to know each other, learn about each other's culture, about their country, likes, dislikes. I mean, it's awesome.